when we add radicals, this is 9 times the square root of 12 plus 10 times the square root of 12. Think about the square root in this case as being a variable. Let's call it u. This is equal to 9 times u plus 10 times u. Now we can see the rule much more clearly for radicals. This just becomes 9u plus 10u, which is 19u. We said u is equal to the square root of 12. This is 19 times the square root of 12. And don't forget, we have to simplify the square root of 12. How do we do that? We make a factor tree, 3 times 4. And this is really as far as I need to go, because that would make this equal to 19 times the square root of 3 times 4 which is equal to 19 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 4, which is equal to 19 times the square root of 3 times 2, which is equal to 38 times the square root of 3. We have negative 7 times the square root of 63 and 63 is equal to seven times nine. This is equal to minus seven times the square root of seven times the square root of nine. Plus eight, let's factor our 112. 112 is divisible by two, that gives me 56. Two again, 28. Two again, 14. Two again, and seven. I have one, two, three, four, twos. This is equal to minus seven. Well, let's just do this. We have the square root of nine, we know is three, times the square root of seven plus eight. And we have times the square root of seven times the square root of 2 to the 4th power. This equals negative 21 times the square root of 7 plus one easy way to do this now that we've learned our exponent rules. The square root of 2 to the 4th is equal to 2 to the 4 halves, which is equal to 2 squared, which is equal to 4. Now I have 4 times 8 times the square root of 7. This whole thing equals minus 21 times the square root of 7 plus 32 times the square root of 7. My final answer would be 11 times the square root of 7. I'm going to start off. Simplifying each term as much as possible, and then I'll put them together. Minus 6y to the 4th times the 4th root of 256y to the 7th. Let's simplify that. That equals minus 6y to the 4th times, let me just do a factor tree for you, 256 is the same as 2 times 128, 2 times 64, 8 times 8. Each one of these, I know this is 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 3rd. That means I have, so I'll circle them as I go, 3, 6, 7, 8 twos. I have the 4th root of 2 to the eighth power, I have an index of four, which means I can simplify this to minus six y to the fourth, two to the eight fourths, 
y to the 4 fourths, y to the 3 fourths, minus 6, y to the 4th, 2 to 8 fourths is 2. So 2 squared is 4. I have y to the 4 fourths, which is y to the 1, which is y. And then I have y to the 3 fourths. Multiplying 4 times 6, and I get minus 24. I'm multiplying y to the 4th times y. I get y to the 5th power times the 4th root of y to the third power, okay? That takes care of the first term. Let's do the second term. I have seven y squared times the fourth root, 81. 81 is nine times nine, and this is three squared, and this is three squared. Now we have four threes, or three to the fourth power. Since I have 15 y's, what I really want to do is if I divide 15 by 4, I get 3. We have y to the 12th, 3 times 4, times y to the 3rd power. I still have y to the 15th power, but now, as you can see, this is 7y squared. I have 3 to the 4 fourths which is going to cancel. I have y to the 12 fourths, and then I have y to the 3 fourths. This is equal to 7y squared times 3 times y, 12 divided by 4 is 3, to the third power, y to the 3 fourths power. This is 7 times 3 is 21 and y squared times y to the third is y to the fifth power. And then all I have left is a y to the three fourths, which makes this 21 y to the fifth times the fourth root of y to the third power. I've simplified each term basically as much as I can. So now I end up with minus 24 y to the fifth times the fourth root of y to the third power plus 21 y to the fifth times the fourth root of y to the third power. Oh, wow. Look at that. I can factor out from both terms the fourth root of y to the third power. I can also factor out y to the fifth power, and I end up with, doing it a little differently this time, times the fourth root of y to the third power, and then I just have minus 24 plus 21. We get y to the fifth power times the fourth root of y to the third power and then minus 24 plus 21 is minus 3. This should be my final answer. These are pretty easy, actually. If I have the square root of 9 times the square root of 9, this is the square root of 9 squared, which is the square root of 9, 9 to the power of 2 over 2, which is equal to 9. Notice, if I say the square root of x times the square root of x, if x is greater than or equal to 0, equals the square root of x squared, which equals x. This is the square root of 22 times the square root of 2, which equals the square root of 2 times 11 times 2. And now that you understand why all these things are happening, hopefully, I can say that if there's an index of 2, which is invisible, if I have 
two of the same value under the radical, it just becomes a two on the outside of the radical times the square root of 11. Because we can also say this is the square root of two squared times the square root of 11. The square root and square cancel because it's really the same as two to the two halves, which is one. This equals two times the square root of 11. So if you have something like this, start factoring this as far down as I can. This is equal to six times eight, two times three, and this is two times four, and this is two times two. 48 is equal to one, two, three, four twos, two to the fourth power times three. Let's do 75. 75 is three times 25. 25 is five times five. This is equal to three times five squared. And then that everything is multiplied together. What I really have is five times the square root of two to the fourth times three. And since it's multiplication, I can put them all under the same radical times three times five squared. That is all these factors here. We have five times the square root. Well, this is two to the fourth, three squared, five squared, which is equal to, let's put them into fractional exponents, two to the four halves, three to the two halves, five to the two halves, which is equal to five times two squared, because four halves is two, three to the one power, five to the one power, which equals five times four times three times five, which is equal to 20 times 15, which is equal to 300, however you wanna do it. But a nice easy way to think about it is 15 times 20. And whenever I have a zero, I just put it off to the side because I don't really need to multiply everything times zero. Five times two is 10, carry the one. Two times one is two, two plus one is three. And then I can drop my zero down. My answer is 300. We don't have anything left as a radical. This is really just multiplying. As long as the indexes are the same, I can just distribute. This becomes the square root of 55 minus nine times the square root of 15. This just becomes, and that's as simple as I can make this. Last, we have the square root of two times five times the square root of five minus five times the square root of six. This is equal to five times the square root of 10 minus five times the square root of two times six. I'm putting it like that for a specific reason. The square root of 10 is two times five, so I don't have any two values in common, but six, is the same as two times three. This becomes two times two times three, which equals five times the square root of 10 minus, under the radical, same as two squared. Since it's under the square root sign, it's two to the two over two, which is two. I have two squared, which makes two. Two times five is 10 times the square root of three.